are creating an interactive card using some new products from Waffle Flower's August release. This card features the super cool nesting frame circle dies or circle frame dies. These are great for just adding a frame to your card. Really quick and easy, great for making shakers even. Uh, there are also squares that came out and rectangles th that work with an A2 card base. So these are really handy as well. In fact, I've used these um, to create a frame or add a frame to a card I made on IG Live. Hi, Daniel. Um, this is the card I made during a live on IG and I just added a frame. It's a great, frames are great for kind of reducing or narrowing your card front so you don't have so much to fill. Uh, it's just really handy. And excuse that giant mess back there. <laughs> it's just been a scramble today. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera away from my face and down to my semi-clean workspace. And we will get started on today's card. It is an interactive card. It's not too involved, but because it's interactive, there are a fair amount of steps and I wanna make sure I go through them all slowly enough so you guys can really figure out how to make this really kind of cool kind of spinner card. So I'm gonna turn the camera away from my face here. So just give me a second. There we go. Go point down to our work surface. All right, there we go. Let me do this a little bit here so we're centered. So I've already got some of the prep done, as you can see. We're going to use this beautiful butterfly from Galena set. This is the Spread Your Wings set. This came out on a couple of releases ago. I love it because I just love butterflies. And I think a butterfly spinner is really appropriate. I'll put that aside. We'll color this later. I wanna start by creating our background. So I have a panel here of Bristol paper. If you're not familiar with Bristol paper, it's a smooth surface kind of paper. This is actually Bristol vellum. Um, I would recommend Bristol smooth. Uh, I think Bristol smooth is a little bit more versatile. Hi, Shay. Um, but this is vellum. Um, I mistakenly bought vellum one time and I'm using it up and it works really well. Hi. It does work for, uh, I think for a lot of water techniques. And uh, I think I prefer smooth for when I'm painting. When I'm trying to paint something, that's when I would use a smooth. Hi, Alicia. All right, let's zoom in there a little bit. Oops, and I'm sorry, I bumped the camera. You might hear some noises. My kids just got home from school. Okay, we're gonna start by just simply ink blending. And you know, actually, I think I wanna put my water medium mat down. I'm gonna grab the mini, stick that guy down. Let's turn it this way. And we're gonna do some very simple ink blending. We're not actually gonna create a gradation. We're almost going to do this um, random, almost camouflage kind of background. So I have four Distress Oxide colors picked out. Um, grabbing all the blending tools here, we have, or I have Wild Honey, Salvage Patina, Shaded Lilac, and Picked Raspberry. I always like to start with my lightest shade, which here, even though these are all fairly light, except for maybe the Picked Raspberry, I'm gonna start with the yellow because that kind of gets eaten up the quickest. Oops, get that little foam guy back on there. And I'll tap off a little on the excess, even though this does not have to be a perfect blend because we're gonna do some more another technique to this. So I've squeezed in another technique in this live. We're doing a little cool kind of water stamping technique, which is just another way to use your stamps. And I think it's kind of fun and gets a different look. It's great for kind of a subtle background. All right, so that's a wild honey. Let's move on to Savage Patina. I just kind of did it randomly. And I'll add some of this beautiful Savage Patina. I love this new color. It's not the newest new color. I still haven't gotten the prize ribbon yet. But 
I do really love this color. Has anybody get oh, has anybody gotten the prized ribbon yet? Do they love it? Okay, now we're on to shaded lilac. And I will, I'm doing it pretty light right now. I will go over this and darken it up just a bit. Um, go over it a couple more times with the colors, kind of keeping them in the same spots. It does look gorgeous, Shay, I agree. I wanna get it, I just haven't gotten around to ordering it yet. I like to kind of like um, get my list going and when I have enough stuff to get the free shipping, then I'll put in my order. So that's when I'll get it is when I, have enough stuff on my list to make sure I get free shipping. So I have to wait a little bit until I run out, out of some of my staples. I do need some new, uh, probably some new plates because mine are cracked. Yeah. So this is the picked raspberry. Haven't used it yet. I'm sure it's beautiful. It looks like a really pretty blue. So I am ink blending on this Bristol paper because I'm gonna do a little water technique. You could even do this though on regular cardstock. Um, you just won't have your color lifting as much for the, for the color lifting, the wet technique that we're gonna do after this ink blending. So it almost has like a doppled look but I really like this. It's looking really good. So now I'm just kind of intensifying everything. This will blend it a little bit out too. So I'm just going back through my colors. Kind of overlap. Yay, you caught me live, good. We're going at a little bit different time. Well, since this kid started school, I've been doing, well, I guess this is the normal time. <laughs> it's my IG lives that I'm doing at a different time. Okay, we're getting there. I love it already. Now time for that shaded lilac and I'm getting, my fingers are starting to pick up some of the colors. So I'm gonna grab a little piece of, um, this is micropore tape. It's what I use to die cut with. I just have a piece here and I'm gonna kind of stick it to my fingers. Yes, that's exactly what I think it looks like, Shay. Just stick it to my fingers so I have something, so when I touch it, I don't get any fing fingerprints. Not that that matters too much because we are gonna do a cool water effect. Well, I kind of, I stand up when I do these lives, so it, it just works for me. And I can kind of see them, your comments, I mean, there is a delay, but I can kind of see them coming in and it's just easier for me to do it kind of standing up. A lot of people can't um, see their screens while they work. Oh, good. Yeah, that summer class was so fun. I really enjoyed it. I can't wait for our new one that's coming in September. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And it's two days, the new one's two days. So that's pretty cool. There's so many great craft classes going on right now. It's like really exciting. <laughs> and then we have September coming up. Oh my, so many cool things coming. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be nice to have the, the products that we're using, even though like for mine, and I know a lot of designers are mindful and they've tried to pick like techniques or ideas that you could use other products for, for, for the Hero Arts class. Okay, there it is, all done. Isn't it pretty? It's so pretty. Okay, so I'm actually going to use, I'm going to clean this, but I'm gonna use my mat and show you the next technique. So we're going to kind of change the background just a little bit. You could totally leave it as it is. I think it's really pretty but we're gonna add a little bit more interest to it with our stamps. Oh no, I just realized, oh, I'm gonna to have to stamp it again. Oh no, wait, did I use a different one? I used a different one. Okay, never mind. sorry. 
I just realized a mistake, but that's okay. It's not a mistake. It's fine. I'm going to use this butterfly here. I actually have this one here that I stamped onto this cardstock already loaded in my Misty, and I don't want to take it out because I have to stamp this image again in the exact same spot. And I just realized that that could be a problem because I need this butterfly, but I actually used this one, so we're good. So I pulled off this stamp. I'm going to mount it onto a block. And let's clear the way. I need a little bit more room here. I'm gonna put my paper here and my, my uh, media mat over here. Get that stuck on there. And then I'm gonna grab some water and spritz it on to my stamp. So just give me a second. I gotta figure out where I put my spray bottle. Oh, here it is. Okay, so here's my, I'm gonna use my Distress Sprayer. Any one will work. You do want one that kind of does a fine mist. Well, let's do it on camera. I'll move that to this side. I'm worried about getting water on this. So I'm not ready for this to get water spots on it yet. So I'm gonna put that to the side. Spritz this with some water, get it going. Okay, so that surface has some water on it. And now we're gonna grab that panel. <laughs> sort of, try to do that here, all right. Wipe off some of this excess water here. I don't want drips, I'm trying to avoid drips took too long. Okay, and then I'm just going to stamp it. Let it sit there just for a second and bring it up. And then you have this almost like ghost butterfly image. And if you take your towel and lift it up, you'll get it even lighter than that. And if I use a little less water, I'll get it a little bit more, um, sharper or the lines a little bit more th or thinner there we go take my towel pick up the water and this works this will work on regular cardstock but it works really good on this um vellum or bristol paper there we go. That one was a little bit finer. You see there a little bit less water. It'll be a little sharper, but I like it either way. I like the, um, how it changes, you know, and this would also work with, uh, distress inks too. Let's do this one kind of upside down. Yes, that's exactly what you should be able to, you, you want, with, I hope you can mix, for my class especially, for Hero Arts, you just need a stamp set that's solid. But yeah, we try to do it, I know a lot of them are conscious of making it accessible to everybody, even if you don't have the Hero Arts products. Here we go. Maybe we'll do one here. And these are fairly light colors. I picked out pretty light um, oxides. These are on the pastel. Hello, Stephanie, the pastel kind of spectrum. So if you picked darker colors, you would get even more contrast. And this kind of like shadow stamping would be even more visible. But isn't it looking so cool? Isn't that neat? And you can do this with your polymer stamps. You can also do this as works really well with hygiene with foam stamps but it does also work with your photopolymer stamps and i didn't on the original maybe we should try it <laughs> i'm a little bit worried i don't know how it will work but I feel like this is a panel that needs some of that pixie spray, right? Some of that like shimmer spray. 
Maybe we'll try it on this one because I think that would just be so pretty with the butterflies and everything. And this, I think definitely, this is a pretty simple card we're making as far as, um, yeah, shimmer. I agree, Shay, we need to bring it on. This is a pretty simple card, but I, this, this background really adds a lot to it, a lot of interest. All right, we're getting there. I just think I wanna stamp a little bit on this corner here and we are done, but wow. So cool. What's that blue thing, huh? <laughs> what are you? Probably something from my very dirty, dirty towel. <laughs> you know, I have a cleaner one here. Let's, gr let's grab this one. Yeah, uh, the old butterfly set, I loved it. Maybe, is it the Pretty Wings? Is that the set? Or is it maybe one illustrated by... Um, Helen uh, Dardick, I think she did a butterfly set. I'm forgetting their older sets. But Nina has, um, she works with artists or illustrators and to design her sets. And I just think that's so cool. That's why Waffle Fowler sets can be so unique and original. Cause these are like, they're not stamp makers, they're artists. Yes. <laughs> Pretty Wings is one of my favorites, if that's the one you have. I love that one. It's like a layering butterfly set. I love it. It is unique. It's almost, the butterflies almost look like moths, which I, I love. I love that they look a little bit moth-like. I think you can still get Pretty Wings. I don't know if you can. Maybe not. It also has flowers that are really cool too. Okay, I think that is it. So there's our background. Should we try the shimmer spray? So I have this from Brutus Monroe. Hello, Beth. Let's try it, right? I can't resist. I've never tried it before. <laughs> Nothing like doing something for the first time in a live with everybody watching and, and everything riding on this panel. But if it looks terrible, I, 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 well, I can't imagine it looking terrible, right? Shimmer spray doesn't ruin anything. How did you make the background with all the colors? Stephanie, I first just ink blended them with oxides. I'll show you the oxides I used. I used five, four, not five, four oxides. Wild honey, sav salvage patina, shade lilac, and picked raspberry, and just kind of ink blended them randomly. I did it two or three times, you know, in the same place to kind of build up the intensity, but I went through my four colors, like a round of my four colors once, and then again, then again, and then again. So I had like some intensity built up, a fair amount of ink on here. And then I did that water stamping where I spritzed my stamp with water and then stamped it onto the panel. And that panel, that water activates the, um, the ink and then I just lifted it up with the towel but you don't have to lift up with the towel, but it does start to get kind of messy with that residual water left on there. So I just kind of lifted it up and that left that impression, which is, I think, really cool. It's kind of like uh, one-upping the water spots, <laughs> sort of. It's kind of the same idea as water spots, but stamping with your water instead of just sprinkling it on top. Very easy. I did use Bristol paper. You can do this with regular cardstock, but Bristol paper, I think, works a little bit better. Your lights, your water area, well, I should say the ink lifting part, your ink lifts better on Bristol paper, and Bristol paper handles the water a lot better. Uh, regular cardstock, when you put water on it, it kind of bubbles up or, you know, expands. Bristol paper doesn't do that, really. So that's, how I, that's why I like to work on it with water techniques, that, but, you know, preference that water techniques that don't require a ton of water. This is not watercolor paper, but it does handle water better than your cardstocks, even your heavyweight cardstocks. So that's how I made that background. Now we're going to try just giving it a spritz with our shimmer spray here. This is Brutus Monroe. I've never tried this before. No problem, Stephanie. And this, and we will have, I'll have this, not that you want to do it, not that you can do it now, but, um, 
or maybe you can't, I don't know, but this will be saved to the YouTube channel. So if you can see it in real time, um, once we're done with the replay, isn't this pretty? Wow. There's so much in here too. Jeez, this is pearl. Okay. Let's see what this does. Woo. It is going to obscure my butterflies a little bit, but I don't think that's necessarily horrible. Very pretty. So I'm just going to leave that alone to dry a little bit. And let's work on our other um, butterfly. Clean this off a little. I think it'll be pretty, but we won't see the butter. The butterflies will be, I think, a little lost, but but not terrible, like a little bit camouflaged, but it, it is so pretty. Isn't it pretty? Gosh, it's beautiful. Wow, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. Wow, that's really pretty. I'm not, I'm new to shimmer sprays. That's really pretty. Okay, so let's grab my butterfly. I stamped the largest butterfly from the Spread Your Wings stamp set in a gray. This is actually Waffle Flowers um, like a pro gray ink. I just wanted to do a plain ink. You could just use black, just something that's Copic friendly. And now I'm going to Copic color this. The finished butterfly will actually be heat embossed, but I do not like to color Copic color with heat embossing already like heat set and everything. Cause it just, my, I get the, I get, I'm not a clean Copic color and I get Copic marker ink or Copic ink all over the heat embossed lines. It's just a mess. I'm not good with it. I like to stamp it first in just any ink that doesn't really matter, then color it and then pop it back into my Misty and stamp it in Versamark ink and, and then heat emboss it. It's all oh, bad. I love this set. Yeah, Galena did it great. It's a gorgeous set. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in here. We're gonna do some really light Copic coloring. Now I have Copics picked out that match those um, Distress Oxides that I picked. So I have like a purple combo, a pink combo, a kind of, I guess almost like a pistachio combo and um, a yellow combo. I'm gonna look at my original here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my, my weakness is being neat and tidy. <laughs> And I'm definitely not neat and tidy with my Copics. I've learned all the all the hacks for um, cleaning up your Copic mistakes. Like obviously the colorless blender, but of course my other favorite, which is um, a white gel pen, which I use religiously. I'm gonna color different sections here. Oh, cool, Beth! Have you given them a try? They're so fun. And on, um, I think you were there, Beth, on IG, on last Friday, I did a, was it last Friday? I can't even remember anymore. I made a whole, oh no, it was two Fridays ago. I made a whole like two story building with those storefront dies. They're so fun. I love scene building. It's very time consuming. And I, I won't lie, I do sometimes find it intimidating, but just because it's not intimidating because it's so time consuming or so big. It's just intimidating because I, I really second guess my color choices. I'm not, I don't have, I don't pick out the right colors I think for scene building sometimes. Yes, color, I, the, I, I agree. The white gel pens work the best. They will be there Friday. Oh, cool. Okay. So now I'm going to color in, so this is kind of my base for my pink, so my light color for my pink. And I'm coloring in everything or every section of this butterfly that I'm going to have pink. And since I don't have to worry about staying in the lines, at least not that much, I'm apparently not gonna stay in the lines. <laughs> What's your favorite technique or thing to do on car cards, cards? Oh gosh. Well, I'm kind of a technique junkie. 
Like I love to try out a bunch of different techniques, so it's hard for me to pick one. I do think ink blending is is so impactful. And um, once you figure out like your your method that works for you, whether brushes or blending tools, it's so empowering and it's and I think people are you give it to you give a card to someone who doesn't make cards and they see your ink blended background and they just are really impressed. I think it's a great way to impress people too because it looks so flawless. Ink blending can look so flawless. So I do really love ink blending. But I love to try out different techniques as well. I'm trying to think of anything new. I recently tried a new Jennifer McGuire technique with um, acetate, coloring on acetate with alcohol markers, and I thought that was really cool. Um, definitely want to play with that a little bit more. She always has the best new th new ideas. I used to make. I haven't made as many interactive cards as I used to. So right now I'm blending it out a little bit. Ink blending and die cutting. Oh yeah, die cutting. Gosh, die cutting is what sealed the deal for me being obsessed with card making, that for sure. So I got into card making because I got a Cricut for my birthday and I didn't know what, I wanted to play with it, but I didn't know what to make or, or actually for Christmas, not that that matters. And um, so now I'm moving on to my yellow combo. And it, I get, maybe I wasn't very good. I mean, I was super happy and I played with my Cricut a lot, but there's just some things I couldn't get good cuts with. And in the process of, you know, making cards with my Cricut, I discovered card making with stamps, even though I had stamped before. Um, I just hadn't done it in a while. Um, but I just, I've discovered all the new brands. Yeah, alcohol inks are awesome. And, and then I discovered dyes. I had never used dyes before. I had stamped before, but never used dyes. And I was like, what? I couldn't understand how something that wasn't really like sharp, just had an edge, could cut. I just didn't believe it. And then I actually finally broke down and bought some things. And it was just like, wow, this is so cool. I love my brushes until I discovered the new rounded top with the original. Oh, I have to try. I had some of those. Oops. I like the rounded top too. I like those from scrapbook.com. Those are great for blending. They really are. Sorry if I'm, this is bouncing. Touch the screen. Used to use your Cricut all the time, but the dyes gave that wonderful, I, they gave that beautiful edge, right? That little kind of almost domed rounded edge. Oh. That was it for me. I was like, this is worth, I don't, I, maybe this is like, <laughs> you know, it almost feels like going backwards and as far as technology, but it's better. It was just so much better. I, I love, I agree. I love die cutting. It's just like, wow. And you could get intricate cuts that you could not get with your, or I couldn't get with my Cricut. I know some people are masters of their crickets and they can get amazing things. And I'm just like, how? I couldn't get my cricket to cut a circle well sometimes. Oh. Oh, you're, I, I don't, I'm not as good as I would like to be on my, my, um, um, with my Copics. That's for sure. But thank you. I would like to improve. But I'm keeping this is pretty simple. I think light colors are key. <laughs> if you're not feeling super confident, at least for me, that's what I've found. If I don't feel, I like my blending better when I stick with kind of a light palette. Yeah, those dome blending tools are really great. I've purchased some and I love them. I just haven't swapped over my entire, um, you know, my... Because I have, I do this system of keeping a little foam top for each one of my ink colors that I like to blend with. Uh, I really like that because I get kind of saturated with the ink and I just think I get better blending results by keeping kind of an individual one for each ink that I like. And a pure, pure um, form or per, pure look of that ink color not being tainted by like maybe other blues. 
Okay. This is just a really fun, pretty pastel-y butterfly. Kind of 90s colors. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good way to do it. When you when you, when you need to replace them, replace them with the dome. That's a great way to do it. Cuz they do kind of break down. All of them do a little bit. So replacing is kind of necessary. I guess that's um a plus on the brush side. I don't think your brushes break down like your blending tools, but the, I just can't imagine how, it just seems so, oops, I missed those. It just seems so expensive to buy brushes for all of your colors, which is, you know, like one for every one of your inks, which I know that's not what people do, but that's what I would want to do because I like keeping my colors really pure. And if I'm being really honest, I'm not very good with the brushes. I need more practice. Isn't that funny? I think I just got too used to blending tools and I'm just no good with brushes. Okay, it's coming along. We just have the purple now. Move those out of the way. Oh, you did? really mattered. I ended up getting a good blend. I was very happy. Oh, good. Yeah, the colors really do matter. And it takes some play. Sometimes you, you think colors that go together are going to look good, and then you like start using them, and you're like, oh no, these don't work. <laughs> these don't blend as well as I thought. And skin tones, that has got to be one of the hardest, um, like you can't get away with, it. your skin's cones just are very so subtly and I don't know. It seems like you have to be really accurate with skin tones. Ooh, you have a, a cut and scan, perfect. There you go, you do have the best of both worlds. Yeah, I almost bought a cut and scan. I haven't purchased that yet, but I can see why people get those. That seems so handy. So I don't know if this is, this does not look like the color I used before. <laughs> I, I think I, so I, I always write down the Copics have the best collection for skin tones. Oh, awesome. I'm gonna try a different color. So I've made this card before yeah, see, see, here's where one, I just think I made that mistake. I made this card before. Oh yeah, this is better. And um, I wrote down one of my colors wrong. <laughs> I still use my Cricut because I do scrapbooking and 3D paper projects. Oh, don't disappear yet. My comments always fade away before I have a chance to read them. And it helps a lot to have those for things. Yes, I can see why the Cricut's very helpful for scrapbooking for sure. Being able to cut out lar you know, large letters for whatever um, you're scrapbooking, like whatever, a, a, a name or um, whatever you want to say, like a big word, I can definitely see why it would be really handy for that. I mean, I, I, I still use my Cricut, but I don't use as much as I... I'm used to. I use it for not card making now. I use it for, um, what do I use it for? Oh, making, we make Father's Day shirts. We make like stencils out of the, using the Cricut and then put them on a shirt and then paint over. That's how we use them. Okay, maybe it was the other ink. I don't know. We're going to do a little bit darker. We're almost ready for the fun part. Use all the things, good. I think that's just good. 
Once I got into crap or card making, like for real, for reals, like really deep down the rabbit hole, I haven't crafted like I used to, which is, I think it's kind of a shame. I need to craft like, because I used to craft lots of things too. I was always, always crafting my whole life. Even when I was, you know, little, I was always crafting. But then I got obsessed with card making and <laughs> it hasn't left much room for anything else. People always ask, well, what do you do when you're not card making? And I'm like, well, gosh, I don't think I do anything else besides card making. <laughs> not mad about it, but I would like to incorporate some regular crafting in. Okay, so this is kind of dry. Look at how pretty, super pretty. Okay, we are gonna stamp this now. I mean, I've candle, I've made candles, uh, wreaths. What else have I done? Jewelry, of course. I've done tons of things. Okay, so we are gonna heat emboss this. The stamp is lined up perfectly to the butterfly because I haven't moved it at all from when I stamped it originally. Thank goodness for the misty. I'm gonna grab my antiseptic powder, get my embossing powder and my ink ready to go here. Just got to make sure the most important thing that this paper is nestled perfectly into that corner so everything lines back up again. Did I get, I have the new Misty, yes. I love it. I do love it. I don't think though if you have a Misty and it's working fine, you know, it's not broken or anything, I don't think you need to get the new new misty the new version even though i do like it better but it is they're they're both you know the original misty is a high price point and this one is i think about the same but still you know if it ain't broke don't fix it kind of thing i just like how the hinges are kind of like recessed a little bit they're just out of the way and my favorite part is it doesn't like just fall down it kind of um I don't know, it has like a slower fall. But you don't need to replace your, your original Misty with a new one. I don't think that's necessary. Okay, I'm gonna stamp it one more time. But one thing I do love about Misty's, is our big fan of, is the mouse pad. I will never go back to a paper pad ever. I don't, I actually like loathe the paper pads. I like these mouse pads so much better. They clean and nicely. I like them a lot. Okay, we're gonna pour some silver embossing powder over this. I love it too, Jen. It's, I think it's just, it's basically what I do every time I Copic color and heat emboss. My mouse pad warped, oh no. I think when I was heat embossing, oh yeah, that probably do it. I don't know if you can. That's a bummer, I'm sorry. You can get replacement ones. I'm not sure if you know that, but you can buy just a mouse pad and they're not too expensive. So that's something you can get too. You can get it straight from um, My Sweet Petunia. And I would guess some place like Simon Says Stamp would carry a replacement one. But I mean, you could probably just get like a mouse pad, <laughs> right? I think that would work. But they still make, they have to still make mouse pads, right? People still have mouses, don't they? Mices, mice? <laughs> All right, I'm getting my heat gun. I'm gonna turn this on and heat emboss this. Just making sure it's fairly clean. It looks good. Oops, missed a spot. 
Hello. All right. There it is, all heat set I use. It's still usable for now. Okay, that's good. So here's the finished butterfly. It looks so nice and neat because that heat embossing hides all my mistakes, which is so handy. So we're ready to die cut this out. I'm gonna use the matching dies and die cut this butterfly out real quick. And then we're we're on home, we're ready to actually do kind of the interactive part. So let me grab the matching die. Oops, it's sticky. Why is there tape in there? Get that nice and lined up. I think I even grab a piece of tape just to make sure everything stays where it should. And I'll run this through. I just used a silver embossing powder. It's actually just Recollections brand, so nothing fancy. That's all I used. <laughs> okay, Stephanie, no problem. Have a good rest of your day. Okay, there is that butterfly aisle die cut out. Now let's move on to, we have to stamp a sentiment. To this panel but look at how nicely everything matches and i'm gonna grab thank you um the circle dies here here they are we're using these ones and i think i used this one here so the one right in the middle and i'm gonna have it kind of in the upper part of this so we're gonna go ahead and, well, let's stamp this real quick. Let's get that over with. I wanna stamp the sentiment now before I really start to get into putting this card together. Because it's much easier to stamp it now before I accidentally try to put foam adhesive on it and forget. The sentiment I'm using is from one of the new stamp sets that came out. This is the Coffee Talk Shop, or <laughs> Coffee Shop Talk set. And I saw this fluttering by and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to use that the butterfly set. We are also gonna heat emboss this. You know what, I think, so the original card I used silver. I'm kind of wondering if I should use white now. What do you guys think, silver or white embossed? I just kind of thought the silver was hard to read. I think the silver's fine. But you can also white emboss if you think that's a little bit tricky to read. White embossed, Shay thinks white embossing. Okay, we can try white embossing. I think it'll be pretty with white embossed too. Ah! Okay, we just need to not try to put that on there right now. <laughs> Let's do there. So I think that looks pretty straight and centered. Maybe a tiny bit over. White, okay, we're gonna try white. It's been decided. Okay, we're gonna put down some antiseptic powder. I wonder how that works with the shimmer. <laughs> Probably fine, right? Ink this up with my Versamark ink. Stamp it. We'll do it another time. Okay. Ugh. Grab my white embossing powder here. And I think this will go because we have a little white border on our, oh, that looks beautiful. Taco night, oh, have fun, enjoy your tacos. Oh man, I'm jealous. That sounds delicious. Thanks for joining. 
Okay, I'm gonna heat set with my heat tool here. That looks great, I love it. Thank you. It was a fun one to make. We added some shimmer shine to it and I love it. Okay, so we're gonna now cut this out. So let me grab this. Make sure we're nice and centered here. I think that looks good. So this panel is a little bit smaller than an A2 panel. It's an eighth of an inch shorter on the top and the bottom, and that's to create a border. Oh, wow. So pretty. Bye. Okay, so that's that. I'm actually not gonna keep this. I cut it with, I just put it through the my die cutting machine. So I put it on there, the die on there, and then put the top plate on and ran it through my die cutting machine and the die cutting machine will press it down and it will cause the die to cut through the paper. See that, like they call this part here the blade, which though it's not sharp, um, that will, with pressure will be enough to actually cut through the paper. And your die cutting machine is kind of like a pot, looks kind of like a pasta roller sort of. Mine's kind of heavy to pick up, but I don't even know if you can see. Here's what mine looks like. It has a handle, and this runs through, the sandwich runs through. And there's lots of videos. We have videos on our YouTube channel about die cutting. So you can get kind of in more in-depth if you're kind of new to die cutting. So here's my card base. Now you can see that border, because I made this panel a little bit shorter, uh, it has a nice border. I cut that, I started with the panel shorter than an actual A2 panel, a little, an eighth of an inch shorter at the top and the side, see? And then centered it is 1 16th around, which is really pretty. But when we put this, I'm not gonna use this because this added, let me think here for a minute. This added thickness, even though it's just paper, can kind of cause your spinner to not spin as nicely. So we're gonna do a little bit of ink blending here to fill in this gap. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna grab my colors like that I used earlier. I'm just gonna do a little bit of ink blending here in the center to kind of remedy that. I'm gonna just open them all up. I never usually do this, but get this done quicker. I'm trying to stay away from the edges though. <laughs> That's where I'm trying to be a little careful. I don't wanna get, I don't wanna lose that white. So if you missed me ink blending earlier, here you can see the little, oop, I'm getting very close to the edge. Got to be more careful. Almost ordered the tool. Which tool? Well, let me figure out. I almost ordered those two. Oh, I didn't know how wide it would cut. Oh, I understand now. I understand now, Beth. Um, those are, I must have read yours wrong. Um, they're only a, a quarter of an inch. These are a quarter of an inch wide. Sorry, I went into a whole depth on die cutting. You're like, I know how to die cut, thank you very much. Yeah, they're handy to have, I think. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit more of my cracked pistachio and I'm gonna call that. Good enough, I think. That looks pretty good, I'm gonna do a little bit more. And you'll only barely see this. This will be barely visible. I 
Okay, I think that looks good. And you can even do a little stamping. I think I did. Yeah, I did do the spray stamp. Gosh, I'm doing it all over again. I forgot. Sorry, let's do this actually on camera. So you get a little view of everything that I did here. To make it consistent, I did do on the original, which I'm gonna do again, is do a little of this water stamping, which you'll now see what it looks like on regular cardstock. So that's kind of good. So I have my stamp here. I'm just gonna spritz it with some water. And stamp it on to that cardstock. Oh, no worries. Here we go. And see, you, it still works on regular cardstock. So if you don't have Bristol paper, don't feel like you can't do this technique. I just think the results are a little bit better on Bristol, but they, it is pretty marginal. Okay, we're almost done here. So I'm just spritzing this with water. It's so cool, Beth. It's super cool. It's kind of like, a, it's like water spots, but an evolution of the process. And it's a great way to get kind of a subtle background, but a little bit more interesting than just ink blending. Now look at how well that matches. I'm debating now if I need to spritz it with the spray. <laughs> Maybe just a bit. I don't know how, how stuff. Nah. Okay. Just a bit. I'm going to try to spray a little bit with the, just to be consistent, a little bit of my mist. Thank you, Beth. Okay. I just did it off camera. So it was, I could do just the tiny amount. So I sprayed it a little bit with this shimmer mist. Yep. Yeah, it's what I did to this panel too. This is new. I just got this from Brutus Monroe. It's awesome. I love it. I tried it for the first time on camera with you guys. <laughs> and it's so cool. Okay, great. This just needs to dry. I'm going to heat set this real quick so we can move on. You get so much in this bottle. I feel like this is gonna last me a million years. I'm never gonna have to buy new shimmer spray. <laughs> like one spray on here and that's all you need. Okay, so that's done. That's gonna be a nice background. You of course could use this, but that little bit of thickness can cause your spinner to not spin as fluidly. Okay, so now we're ready to kind of put this all together. We've got our pieces. We're not gonna use this. These are all our pieces. So let's lay it out here so you can see. And you need two pennies. You need some weight to make your spinner. Now, the first thing I need to do is I'm gonna add foam adhesive to this and I'm going to double it up. And I think, now I wanna stay clear of, I'm gonna put this here. See how this is gonna rest inside here and see how when it's like halfway between the opening. Shannon, the circle dies you use to cut the center would be good for penny side. Yes, they would be. They would be. They would be good for sliders, absolutely. This is kind of a slider. It, the, only, um, the only thing is sliders work better when they're straight. So like circles are good for spinners. Well, the bigger the circle, the better movement you're gonna get. We're going small because it's just, my butterfly is so big and it would be like out to here. It's already gonna go kind of past the card, but I just felt like that's fine. But this one here, this circle would work better for a spinner and it does fit on an A2 card, but this wouldn't really give you enough room though. You'd have to use this one. It would work, it would work. It just kind of depends on what image you're using. And these ones, would work too, but you would only get motion from back and forth here. It'd be really hard to get it to go around that sharp corner. All right, let's see. I need my foam adhesive. Here it is. 
And I was saying before, I wanna make sure I don't go really close to this circle with the foam adhesive because this penny has to be able to move around here. So you can see right here, that's why I've got to, on the edges here, I've got to make sure um, it's thin. So first I'm gonna start with this thicker piece. I'm gonna double it up like so. I just folded it on itself. I've lost my scissors. Where did they go? Oh no. Oh, here they are. Remove the backing on one side, stick that down. Okay, for the sides, I'm gonna to move to a thinner adhesive or not so wide, I should say. So I've got this here. Again, I'm gonna double it up, but I think I'm just gonna cut it instead of fold it. My original, I didn't double the adhesive and it doesn't move as smoothly as I'd like. And I'll show you, hopefully when we're done, I shouldn't have a problem showing you both of them. Just have to remember, that's the part. You have to remind me to show you the first one I made, how it moves. I'm hoping this one moves a lot better with the double up adhesive or double up foam. Okay, I'm gonna do that for all of my remaining sides. So yes, this is a little bit of the tedious part. That is sticky, sticky, sticky. One more to go. Now we're actually almost done with the foam adhesive. We just have to use it for the pennies. Oh, I do remember I forgot to grab my, this is a little long, my glue dots, but I can grab those pretty quick. We'll add that right there. Okay, so this is ready to go. It can go on here. Then the penny will go inside. Oh, we need some foam adhesive for this. I'm gonna go back to this guy Double it up. Okay, stick that down. You can try to match these up. I'm not super concerned about getting everything lined up. I kind of like it a little off. All right, so you can see how the penny would go inside here. But I do wanna kind of put this together a little bit or explain it a little bit, maybe, maybe more so think it through before I actually put it together. So I have to stick the butterfly onto that penny. Is that half inch foam? This is, this is actually three, this is three oh fourths and then the thinner one wasn't a quarter. So this is not quite an inch, and this is a quarter inch. All right, so I kind of have to do this all at once. So we're gonna go ahead and start sticking it down. So I'm gonna remove the backing on my foam adhesive. I've got my penny in there. I could tuck, if you forget, you can you, you can tuck it in, but I'm gonna leave it in there. It is, it can be tricky. It is better if you can remember to tuck, put it down before you stick everything down. Usually use a quarter inch. Yeah, quarter inch is good. That would be, that would be ideal. I'm just going back and forth between them. 
put this centered. There we go. Okay, so now we've got our penny in there. I can't move it around yet because that penny's gonna fall down. I don't wanna lose him. But I need some foam adhesive here on that to attach my butterfly to and my second penny to, which I think I used two pennies. Did I use two pennies? Yes. But we need a foam dot to attach or a glue dot to attach, which I did forget to add to the supplies. But first, let's add some foam to this. So I'm gonna use my scissors here, just cut a little square. And now if you have foam dots, this would work great, as long as it's not too big. I'm going to trim this down, or just round the corners, Let's see if you can see what I'm doing. See, kind of making this a circle. Get off there, you. There. See how it's like a little circle? Might trim it down just a little bit more. Removing the edges will allow this to actually spin. I'm gonna have not only this butterfly move around this circle, but also spin while it's doing it. And to do that, you've got to round your foam. I think we're almost there. Oops, let's round this little edge here, get rid of that. So there's no place of cat catching. I think, whoops, I think that'll be okay. So I'm gonna stick that down to my penny. Okay, so there it's stuck down. And now I'd stick it to the other penny and then stick my um, butterfly on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the backing on that. Get it centered. Oh gosh, it's super sticky, which is good. Stick it to the other penny. And now it should, yeah, move around in here. You see how it's moving around? And you can't really tell it now, but you'll tell you'll be able to tell that the penny's spinning too in some part, parts. Okay, so that's good. Now we just gotta sit our butterfly on the penny. And for that, I like to use a glue dot. Grab that, put it on there. Hopefully I can get it to stick on the penny more than this acetate, which it doesn't, never seems to, it doesn't want it to stick to the penny as good as it wants to stick to the acetate. But I don't need too much of it on there. There we go. So I got my glue dot on there. Stick my butterfly down, it completely hides that, those pennies. And now we have our spinner done. Let's see if I can zoom out here so it's not so crazy. Oh, nope, I can't. Well, there we go, that's as far as I can go. This moves a lot better than my first one. You get a little bit of spinning. Woo! When it goes around some of the corners. Super fun. That doubling up the foam adhesive helped a lot from my original. And look at the cool, you know what's kind of neat that I didn't think about? By adding the shimmer, because you're forced to kind of like play and turn it, that shimmer catches the eye, your eye because you're really forced to play with this card and turn it and get that light to hit it at different angles. That's kind of a fun. And you can see every once in a while that butterfly really spinning, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Woo! Lots of fun. Yeah, I think anybody would like it. And when you mail it, like obviously at some parts it extends beyond the card, but all you have to do when you mail it is just, you know, tuck it, move your butterfly around, position it so like here, or even, I can't remember what I had in the original, but anyways, tuck it down there when you're mailing it so it doesn't go beyond the envelope. And then of course they can, once they pull out of the envelope, they can play. It's very fun. So you can see how well that moves. Let me show you my first one I made, which is really pretty, but it doesn't move as well because, oops, let's get that off of there. Um, I only did one layer of foam adhesive. 
See the two here? And this one just doesn't, I even use dimes on this one because dimes are thinner than pennies, but it just doesn't move as good. So definitely recommend doubling up. It can move around, but it just gets caught because you need that two layer of foam adhesive to really get good movement. So fun. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna turn the camera to my face and we are done for the night. <laughs> Late sending it because you wanna play with it. I, well, you, you just have to make two, Beth, right? You gotta keep one for yourself. Thank you so much, you guys, for joining me and spending your evening, afternoon. Oh gosh. <laughs> it gets sweaty and I get Oh, all over the place. But this is a fun one. I enjoyed making this with you. I'm so glad that this one works and moves a lot better than my first. You know, sometimes you just have to make cards twice, you know, before you can figure out how to do them best. It's so fun. It's been so good. Wow. <laughs> all right. I hope you had a good time and I will be live again um, on IG actually on this Friday and then I will be live on YouTube this next coming Tuesday. So I hope I see you guys at either of those times. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening and week. Bye everybody.